Welcome to this Diefelser demo. I'm Mandy, and in this episode, we'll show how to use the interactive max pooling demo application on deeplizzard.com to further our understanding of the max pooling operation that's used inside of neural networks. In deep learning, max pooling is often an operation we see used following a convolutional layer within a neural network. When applied in this way, max pooling will reduce the dimensions of the image output from the previous convolutional layer. We have an entire episode dedicated to max pooling and how it's used in neural networks, so check that out for further detail. For now, we'll be showing how we can use the interactive max pooling demo on deeplizzard.com to further our understanding of this operation. So here on the max pooling demo page, we have several options that we can configure to go through many different max pooling examples. First, we can choose which data set that we want our examples to come from. So we can work with either the MNIST data set or the fashion MNIST data set. So let's, we'll choose MNIST for the first example. We can then choose which digit we want to work with as an example from the MNIST data set. So we'll just choose any digit, we'll choose number two. Now we can see that the number two that we selected is showing as our input here in our demo. The individual squares in this input represent individual pixels of the image and are filled with the actual pixel values. Now we have one last option left. We can choose the filter value. So we can choose what height and width we want our filter and what horizontal and vertical stride we want to use. Recall that the max pooling operation uses a filter or a window of a defined size to slide over the input. And for each block of pixels that this window lands on in the input, the max pooling operation will output the max value inside of this window. And the number of pixels that we slide to the right with this window with each step we take is dependent on the horizontal stride value that we choose. So if we want to move over our filter by two pixels each time, then we will use a horizontal stride of two. And similarly, we set the vertical stride for how many pixels we want to move down as we traverse the input. So for our first example, we will use the default values of two for the filter height, width, and the horizontal, <laughs> horizontal, horizontal and vertical stride. So now each time we hit step in the demo, our filter will move over by a stride of two pixels. And for each block of pixels in the input it lands, the max pooling operation will select the max value pixel in that particular pool or in that filter window. And it will output that value here in this output space. So by hitting step multiple times, we can see that with each step, we're moving over by two pixels in our input to the right. So we're moving over by two pixels, which is our horizontal stride. And once we reach the edge here, we'll, we're not able to step any further to the right. So we're now going to move down by two pixels in the input. But if we continue stepping until we get to a window that has something other than zeros, as we have here, we can see that the max pooling operation is indeed selecting the pixel with the highest value. So we have three zeros here and 0 0.5. And the corresponding output for this window is 0 0.5 as it is the max pixel. Similarly, the previous pixel is a 0 0.4 for the output. And we can see in the corresponding input that we have 0, 0, 0 0.1 and 0 0.4. So 0 0.4 was selected by max pooling as the max pixel value in this window. So now we'll zoom back out a bit and we will hit play, which will go over and traverse the entire input with the max pooling operation until we have our full output in the right hand side. <laughs> and we can see that this is the final output of applying the max pooling operation across our entire input. And as we know, the max pooling operation reduces the dimensions of the image. So we're starting out with this 28 by 28 image. And as a result of the max pooling operation using a stride of two and our two by two filter, 
we're ending up with this 14 by 14 image. So the max pooling operation reduced the dimensions of this image by a factor of two. So we can zoom out a bit so that we can display our options again. And just to show another example, we'll work with the fashion MNIST data set. And we'll select, I don't know, a sandal. All right. And for our filter, let's work with a three by three filter. And we'll continue working with our horizontal and vertical stride of two. And we will just play. <laughs> So this is the final output of applying the max pooling operation with the 3x3 filter and a vertical and horizontal stride of 2 to this image of a sandal. So we still have this representation of a sandal here, but now with just using the max values of the 3x3 filter that we traversed our input with. So we should now have a better understanding of the max pooling operation and how it's used within a neural network to reduce the dimensions of given images. Experiment more with this yourself by using this demo on deeplizzard.com. Hey, thanks so much for watching this episode. I hope that you enjoyed it. To see more content from us, check out our second channel called Deep Lizard Vlog on YouTube. And be sure to check out the corresponding blog for this episode on deeplizzard.com for additional resources. And while you're at it, consider joining the Deep Lizard Hive Mind, where you'll gain access to exclusive perks and rewards. Thanks for contributing to Collective Intelligence. I'll see you next time.